What's up, Jordan here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make two different types of player movement systems with Swift and Sprite Kit. So this is the first type of player movement. It's uh, nothing special, just normal player movement. It gets input from WAS and D keys and moves your player around. So uh, this is fine now, but uh, you might need a different system, which in which case, uh, like a local forward, uh, so let's say you're making a car game, uh, then you might want a local forward. So it moves your car forward uh, in its own direction instead of moving it globally forward, which would be weird looking. So here it is. If we just drive around, as you see, uh, it moves locally forward. Now for most car games, this is probably exactly what you want. So uh, it looks quite nice. It's a bit big, obviously, because the texture is a bit big, but it's fine. And it works really well. I'm putting it in a very dynamic move local uh, function, and it's just easy to use for any project you might want. So without further ado, let's get started. OK, I'm in Xcode now, so I'm going to choose the Mac OS as the platform and I'm going to choose game as the application type. I'm going to click next and I'm going to choose player movement uh, YouTube. I'm going to choose uh, game technology as Sprite Kit and language as Swift. So I'm going to also integrate gameplay kit and now you can click next. I'll choose where my project is and then I'll click create. And make sure you don't add your project in another project as well. So add to, don't add to any project or work uh, space. So click create. Then I can go uh, games uh, first actually, let's just clear out our scene. So I'll delete actions.sks, move to trash. Go game scene and delete the hello label. I'm also going to change uh, change the background. So let's open the sidebar and change color to just find a white one, like control background color. Good. Uh, we don't need anything else here. So this is fine. We can click game scene. Actually, firstly go view controller and clear out everything like scene uh, node.entities and scene node.graphs they're sitting here. Just clear the whole thing out. Then we can delete everything, every function in the whole game scene, just clear it out. And I am going to make a uh, override function and it's going to be called scene did load. It's a default function, so it gets called automatically when uh, the game starts. I'm going to make a player sprite, so I'm going to have a var, and it's going to be called player. It will be an SK sprite node of type, and it will be equal to, as a template, SK sprite node, and we won't give it any texture. So on the start, we'll go player is equal to SK sprite node, and give it an image named, and then we'll go uh, first uh, one, we'll call it farmer, which is the sprite we'll give it. And I'll get to adding the sprites in a second. Then we can go player.texture, okay, dot filtering mode. And the reason why we have to add the uh, question mark, so not an explanation mark, is because that it might not exist texture. Uh, because as you see here, we called it without giving it a texture. So that's why we need to uh, uh, ask it if it is texture. Then if it is, then we can get the filtering mode. Right, well, then we can go equal to dot nearest. And we can go finally add child and we can add our player. So uh, next function we'll add. Actually, before we, you know, before we do that, I think that what we should do is and by the way, this pixel art, uh, my little farmer character. So I'm going to go player dot uh, size is equal to CG size and give it a width and height of 100, let's say, since it's pretty much a square. I'll then go assets dot XC assets 
okay and i'll drag my two assets in here right i've just added my two assets we have a car and a farmer character which is pixel art so it's very small okay next thing we're going to do is we are going to go to our game scene and you know what before we carry on and things might break let's just run it to make sure our player character looks okay well farmer so let's run it and he looks great so we have a little player character but you may notice we can't move around in fact it makes a, a big buzzing sound uh, the error sound on my mac if i try and uh, press any keys so it doesn't work uh, the reason why is because obviously we haven't added any code for that. So let's start coding it. So we'll be doing two systems. Uh, we'll first be adding the system where it'll just be basic movement. And then we'll have a car and it'll properly drive around. And also I have a handy function which you would probably use in a lot of uh, projects if you do sprite it. Which will, and it'll be called uh, move local forward or move uh, forward or even move local. And it can just uh, move in the direction it's rotating at a certain offset. Now Unity it does this by default, but Xcode doesn't, which is a bit irritating. But yeah, uh, we'll have to do it uh, with code. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a bunch of variables for the different keys that we're going to hold down. So we're going to have a variable for uh, things like left pressed is equal to false. And there's all the things we'd hold down and we'd press it to true when we're holding it down and false when we let go. We'd have right pressed is equal to false and up pressed is equal to false. And finally down pressed is equal to false. There we go. And uh, now what we can do is we can make another function. We're actually two functions. This is another built-in function, which is called whenever something gets pressed. It's called key down. So I uh, usually write an original base uh, project, actually, the default project which we cleared out. You might have seen that it had some default getting input from the player. But you may have also noticed it was something like 0x334 or something like that along the lines of that. It was some hexadecimal thing or binary kind of thing. I, and I don't want to work with that because it's nearly impossible. I can't find any uh, cheat sheets, uh, uh, as you might call it, to try and get the what key it is. So instead I'm going to import a thing called carbon. So just go import carbon and we can then go make a switch case which will be switch okay and the value will be an int version of event event dot key code now the pattern so the pattern for this will be a k capital v and then k again and you'll probably see all these uh, recommended things and you can just scroll through here for every single key on the keyboard. So pretty much any key you would need. So for joystick and things, you this isn't uh, uh, this you wouldn't find any joystick things on here, but, but I'll make another video on joystick actually. But uh, this is for pretty much any key you need on uh, on normal keyboards. We can then go underscore and C and we'd go underscore again and choose what key you want. So in this case, it will be uh, uh, NC and W. This is the forward key. So we would have our up, up press is true. And then we can have another case, just stick it right underneath it. And this will be for S, in which case down pressed is true. And we can just copy this again for W, S, A, and D. So for A, it will be uh, for A, it will be left pressed, and for D, it will be right pressed. And on default, it will just break, so it doesn't run anything if we're pressing another key. And you'd carry on this uh, case for any other keys you need, maybe. Uh, 
some special hold down key, I don't know, maybe a shift for like sprinting or something like that. This is where you'd put it. I'll make a copy of this, but for key up. And in this case, I'll make everything false. So if uh, W is uh, pre pulling up, if we let go of W, then it'll return false and it'll stop trying to move forward. Next, what we can do is we can make an update function in which we'll handle all of this. We'll have update and we'll have an if statement, so lots of if statements. And we'll have if uppressed is true, okay, then we go uh, player. Whoops, uh, let's go player. Player dot position is equal to, or actually plus equal, so you don't have to have a variable, which is let's say uh, player dot position dot y plus by three and then set it. Just plus equals, and it'll be y of course since we're moving up, and it'll plus equals by I believe it's two or uh, four, I think it's two. Let's try two. And if, you, and if you don't like it, then you can change it. I'll then do an else if for down pressed. So the reason why I'm doing this is to make sure you can't do up and down at the same time. It just confuse things and make it uh, just slower and things like that. It just wouldn't, it's not really worth it having up and down. Then I'll do the exact same thing for left and right. So for right, I believe it's plus and for left, it's minus. I believe that's how it works, at least for this. And that should be it. And now if we uh, press play, and let's run it. And if we press W, A, S, and D, okay. A and D don't seem to work. Oh, I think I know why. X code again, we must make it into Y, X. There we go, now it should all work. And now we have a, f a working player controller. If this is all you want, then I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you next one. If this isn't there and you want, let's say, the car moving so it moves locally forward, then you'll need to carry on with the video. So we'll just make the function. And we'll be making use of uh, the sign and cos. So uh, what we want to do is go Xcode. And we want to make a function, which is move local it'll be a cool function or just be underscore object so we don't have to uh write object it'll kind of be like uh, i believe it's c sharp does this we can't put in the name yeah i think c sharp does do this I haven't done c sharp in a, a bit so I've, I've done so much swift now but uh but all you have to do is uh write in the name uh, the object you don't have to write objects when you're calling the function it, you'll see in a minute if you, if uh, I'll show you in a minute though when you call it. Then we'll give it an offset, okay, which is the CG vector. We, uh, it's basically uh, the Unity version of vector two, or just uh, two floats. We have an X and Y. We're actually a DX and DY, I believe, but yeah, uh, it's the same thing. Then we can go let rotation is equal to object dot z rotation and we can go uh, let delta x is equal to offset dot dx uh, and times by cos i believe that's how you pronounce it and rotation then we can go minus it by offset dot dy okay times by sine, okay, and we give it a rotation. And for delta uh, y, uh, then it's just identical, just sine, okay, and then uh, cos. And then finally, we can just go object dot position dot x uh, plus equals by delta x. And then we can go object dot position dot y is plus equals by delta y. Now I was actually considering putting this in uh, the sprite, 
SK Sprite node, I was considering that. So I think what you do is you'd, uh, if you want to do this yourself, I believe you'd go, uh, I believe it's some extension, I think. I'm not sure how to do this. SK Sprite node, something like this. And then you'd put in your move local. And then we wouldn't have to uh, give it. And then say it's just said rotation. So I have no idea how this works since I haven't tested it before, but let's see. It should work now. Where now you could just go player dot move local, and I think it works. And then we can give it a CG vector. Okay, and we'll give it uh, a DX and DY, which is zero, and and four, I believe it is. Okay, whoops, non uh, movement. We put in movement and dy of negative 4. And you can also change the x as well, which is cool, so it can move left and right. Then we need to go player dot z rotation uh, plus equals by 0 0.05. And then plus equals by negative 0 0.05, which is a good value, I believe, for the, for the rotation. And, of course, we need to change from the image name to car and delete the play.size since it stretches it weirdly. So if we run it now, let's see if it works. Okay, it sort of works. I've some things are a bit broken. We, I think I've done some calculation wrong. I think I see what's wrong already. We need to make this a uh, plus by. Okay, now let's see if it works. I believe that was a problem, let's see. And yes, it was. So I don't know if you can see it on the small screen. I'll try and make it bigger quickly. So I'll, I'll just uh, change because I think for some reason there's a small sprite. I think I mismatched the sprite. So I'll just uh, fix that quickly. Okay, I got a more high res version of the picture. I don't know. I think I accidentally scaled it down when I was doing some other projects. But I'll go plus again. And it's way bigger, but as you can see, it moves forward in the correct direction. And you could make any car game, a car game, let's say, or maybe a top-down character that could move around, or, or this is very useful or uh, system though. And I really like the extension, which and how easy it is. In fact, I never actually did an extension uh, before, so it's quite a cool thing. But it's quite cool how you can add uh, stuff like that. Oh well, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you in the next one, uh, where I, I, I'm not sure, maybe I'll make a joystick movement. Uh, if you want anything in particular, then please write it down in the comments below. Oh well, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!